is our history Buildings and people and memories and dreams Who better to tell us than those who were there There's so much to learn from the stories they'll share Living history Hello and welcome to another Living History program with Ted Goldsboro. Today we have a great treat. We have Dave Fish and the Fish family has run a jewelry business for three generations in Ardmore and Bryn Mawr. So we're going to be talking to Dave about his family and about the business. Now Dave, let's start with a piece of paper here. Could you tell me what that is? This was the apprenticeship papers that my grandfather had to use uh, with the signature of my great-grandparents, sealed by the Queen of England, uh, for his time that he was going to be working uh, in his apprenticeship since from 1880 to 1887. Uh, and this was sort of a contract between all the different parties. He was raised in Berwyn, I believe is the pronunciation, in England, but he did his apprenticeship in Falmouth. So he was in, living in Falmouth for seven years while he was doing his apprenticeship. Oh. So and that's the, the document that everyone signed and it told them that he was to do his own laundry, do this housekeeping and what have you, but it was very uh, uh, conclusive. Yes. It, was, it was on both sides of this particular document, uh -huh. so it was, it was quite lengthy. And your family still has that document? And we still have it. We have it framed so that it can be observed by friends and family and what have you. Yeah. We think it's rather an important yes, piece of yes, information. Yes. Okay. And uh, with this picture of two people here, what, what is that? Well, these pictures are a picture of my grandfather and my grandmother. Now, my grandfather came here to the United States in 1888. He went back in 1891 and married my grandmother. And it was always sort of a question, well, how did he have a relationship when he was here and there and what have you? Well, it turned out that where he did his apprenticeship is where my grandmother was from. Oh. So obviously, oh. being a young person, I assumed that he went to church. They did all different kinds of uh, activities, and that's where he met my grandmother. I see. And then he went back in 1891 to marry her. Uh -huh. And then they left from England and came back here to the United uh -huh. States. How did he happen to come to this area of That's America? very interesting, and I cannot tell you why. Whether there was, uh, because they all had to land in New York mm -hmm. by ship, mm -hmm. And there, for some reason, was a draw to bring him to Bryn Mawr. Mm -hmm. And that's where he uh, decided to open up his business mm -hmm. uh, in 1888. And then when they came back uh, in 1891, you will see later that they constructed the business and the building that they lived in on Lancaster Pike for the rest mm -hmm. of their lives. Mm -hmm. Did. Um, this is John. This is John and Lucy mm -hmm. Fish. Uh, did he, from the start, have his shop, or did he work for someone else? No, he started as he rented a small store uh, and started out. Watchmaking was his main thing, mm -hmm. and jewelry uh, repair and selling and what have you. But uh, I believe it was very small at that time. Mm -hmm. That was in 1888. I see. So he was just sort of getting his feet wet to see if this was all going to work. Yes. And you yeah. know, it's hard. You, you don't know well, especially whether it's going to work. Country. Exactly. <laughs> and interestingly enough, we had gotten a letter from a, a brother of his in 1892, 93, and my uncle, my grandfather said, don't come right now. The economy is horrible. Oh. I don't think I can support you and get you started. I see. And so he did not come, and he stayed in England, and he was a tailor. Oh. So he never made it to the oh. new country. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> uh, I put in a picture of a map 
from uh, 1851, and I wondered if uh, you could show us about where your shop eventually was. Okay, this is this is a picture. Obviously, the shop. This was a little earlier, but this is Lancaster Pike. This is County Line Road. This is Roberts Road, and the next little street at the intersection of County Line, Glenbrook Avenue, Conestoga Road, but coming down to the corner of Lancaster and Thomas Avenue is where my grandfather built mm. the building mm -hmm. with the help of my grandmother. And they bought a, built a four bedroom uh, on the second floor with two large rooms on the third floor, a storefront, living room, dining room, and then it added on a larger kitchen as the family grew, mm -hmm. they needed more space. Mm -hmm. So it was all right right there. And as we walk through here, you'll see how their life, <coughs> excuse me, their life evolved around this particular area. Mm -hmm. uh, who, from whom might they have bought that land? That I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, Could you I mention don't have names of property well, owners adjacent? Uh, the Humphreys, which was, Part of uh, Bryn Mawr was called Humphreysville at one time, and the, hu the main uh, Humphrey house was further up in the 800 block of Lancaster Pike. Uh, and the, the Hart's, Clyde Hart, who was president of the uh, uh, Bryn Mawr Bank, uh, lived up on one of the corners right on County Line Road and Thomas Avenue. But th they all were sort of builders or developers uh, the Ashbridge estate was not too far away, out Roberts Road, so that there was uh, a lot of uh, uh, people that had large tracts of land, and then they started to sell them off. So mm -hmm. who particularly owned our property that he bought in 1018 Lancaster Avenue? I can't tell you exactly mm -hmm. who he bought it from. So that's the so corner of Lancaster and Thomas? corner of Thomas and Lancaster oh, Pike. Okay. Yes. Okay. Now on the back is today's map. All right. So you can see uh, Thomas Avenue again comes right out here onto Lancaster Pike. Now our present store is just two doors on the other side of Thomas Avenue. You can see Doyle Al Alley here. Uh, Doyle Alley, they were uh, builders in the area. Uh, Reese Avenue is just a nice, quiet little street. It's sort of a one block long. Uh, you have Warner Prospect further up and going up into uh, the center of Bryn Mawr and Bryn Mawr Avenue. Okay. Now here was, I think from, let me see what the back says, 1896. So by then your store is there, your house of store is there. Yes. And th there you can see, uh, that particular one, remember I mentioned the Hearts? Yes. Well, the Hearts had a property there, but then they uh, sold that property, storefronts and what have you, and they moved up onto Thomas Avenue. John Fish was right here. And this whole block was the Doyle, Sarah Doyle owned mm -hmm. it. And I remember mm -hmm. I mentioned Doyle Alley. So mm -hmm. uh, the names fortunately came to be remembered by the, the street names. Yes. And so it really makes a little bit of history. You wonder, where did they come up with that name? Yes, well, yes. They were usually family names. Yes. Uh, uh, so I so guess the point is that some of our streets have the names of the residents. Exactly. Like Levering exactly. Mill Road and McClendigan Mill. And exactly. Oh, okay. And it all ties in and it makes so much sense. Yes. Here's a, here's a picture of John Christie. Uh, oh, Christie, Ryan and Ryan Christie. And Christie. Oh. So the, of course, they were way further on up. Yes. They were in about the 700 block. And they had a uh, moving and, and moving storage. storage and uh, a large storage area yes. where they, they later had a big fire. Big fire. <laughs> yes, that was pretty. Uh, <laughs> pretty well, I think I'll, uh, we'll move on here. And what is this picture of? This picture is of, uh, as I said, they came here in a 1891. My grandmother and my grandfather, and they proceeded to have eight children. One is my father right here. He was the second to the youngest. Uh, this is Uncle William, and we'll see about him a little bit later on uh, being located down in Ardmore in an Ardmore jewelry store. This is my Aunt Amy, interesting enough, and my Uncle Charles, 
they both worked for the auto car. She was their nurse in residence at the auto car. Charles worked on the line. I'm not sure just exactly what he did, but uh, he was part of the auto car could family. You, could you tell us um, about a house or a store later about auto car in 1899, 1900? Right. Well, at one point, my grandfather bought a business, uh, a jewelry store down in Ardmore, and it was located where the auto car was going to be. And that business uh, was sold, and my grandfather bought the business name, Francis, Harry Francis, and uh, it was that property was torn down, and so the store was moved down onto Cricket Avenue. Okay. And so and we'll have some pictures coming. We up have on some that. pictures of that. Okay. But that Uncle William and Uncle Frederick ran that store oh, for my grandfather. Oh, so there was a chain of John Fish and Son jewelers oh. of two stores. Okay, Bryn Mawr and Ardmore. Bryn Mawr and Ardmore. Okay, good. Uh, we have a picture here of, and there is a there is a fish in here, a William. And then there's Mary Craig. Correct. <laughs> they were in the same class. Uh, what school? From La Marine. They all, every, all the Fish family went to La Marine high schools. Uh, some did not graduate from the high school because a lot of the programs were only up to the eighth grade. So depending on what the child was going to do, they mm -hmm. might start working for parents or what have you, or they might go on. But Uncle William married Mary. And Craig, and so they had known each other since elementary school. Th yes, this picture wow. is of the seventh grade. Wow! And they had no children. Unfortunately, they had no children, but they did have. She had uh, family members, uh, uh, nephews, and what have you. So they they were very fond. Well, Dave, we have to take a little break here. We're coming up on a time. All right. So, so we'll be right back after we take our break. We're talking to. John, uh, Dave Fish, we'll be right back.